Ho, and you are back in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. And this episode features my mother. And today we'll be discussing the post-apocalypse in fiction and AI change in the music industry. And now I think since you love Billy Joel. I do. <laughs> and his music. She, she's played this music when I was just a little kid. Don't you remember? Uh, of course I do. When you when, Back when uh, audio cassettes were a thing in Yes, cars. they were. Okay. And I used to drive your sister to preschool, and I had, would have Billy Joel on. So I'm okay. glad you remember that. I'm yes. glad, did it make an impact on you? No, I, I'm just I'm just placating you. Oh. But I, I do like I, I do like <laughs> I do like Piano Man. I do Fresh like, kid. I do like uh, Uptown oh, do. Girl. Yes. I, I like I like some of that music. Those are his ideas. Well, yeah. Piano Man is a very iconic song. I like uh, Good Night Saigon. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, too. I really like yes. that song. He did get some criticism because it's about being on. Yeah, but anyway, anyway, yes. this year back on topic. Yes. He has a music video where he's de-aged and that yes. is using AI. Yes. And this this came as a shock to it you. It did. Because well, I, I, I yeah. number one, didn't even know the video was coming out. Um, hello, everybody, by the way. And thank you, Ben, for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about my rock and roll god, <laughs> so to speak. Sorry. Um, so let me just give you a little background. Um, I've been a Billy Joel fan for the longest time. Pardon the pun. And I first saw him in 1984. It was from a piano man to an innocent man tour. So, um, you know, I'm not young, obviously. And I've been a big, big fan of his for many, many years. And he's aged, obviously. He's going to be 75. We have the same birthday, by the way, May 9th, which is not related to anything. But that's part of the reason why I like him so much. And I've gotten used to him the way he is now. And he's changed, obviously, not just his appearance, but his voice. He's gotten very, you know, a lot deeper. So he can't hit the high notes like he used to. And when he started his residency at Madison Square Garden in 2014, I was a little hesitant about seeing him because he's not the same performer that he was. And you know how expensive tickets are, obviously. And then in uh, last year for Mother's Day and my birthday, which are you know, very close. Um, my daughters and my husband, your sisters and your dad, got us all tickets to see him at Madison Square Garden, and he was amazing. Even though his voice has changed, he has a very good band of musicians that help him a lot. So it's just a, it's a whole show. It's wonderful. And then I saw him on New Year's Eve again at UBS Arena, which was also great. And then he announced that he was coming out with a new song. And back in the day, part of the thrill of a new song was going to the record store and buying it. <laughs> and now, you know, you don't have that anymore. It just comes out on Apple Music or whatever, Pandora, and you get to hear it. And, you know, I mean, that's good in some ways, but also not so good. And you used to listen to the radio, too, and it would come on the radio. So I love the song. Great song. And then your sister actually emailed me a link that... The video was coming out or he actually emailed me the, a link to the video and I watched it and it was just bizarre. So it starts out, I know you haven't seen it uh, and you should watch it. It's not terribly long, but it starts out with a handwritten page of famous last words. So this is the last song that he wrote on the River of Dreams album. And I know he has not come out with a new album of vocal music in over 30 years and he was kind of saying this is it i'm not going to write any more vocal music you know he's come out with some classical music albums and he had a single in 2007 but he's basically done with writing popular music and then this song came out and then this video starts with the famous last words like the handwritten lyrics and then he flips the page and it's blank and then you see him at the piano you see his hands and you see him the way he is now and then the camera pans to the top of the piano and there's a cigarette burning and i know he used to smoke <laughs> i don't know if he smokes anymore so i'm like why is there a cigarette on top of the piano and then it pans back and you see him young and he's singing this new song and when i first saw that i obviously knew that wasn't him and your dad was with me when i was watching the video on youtube and i said is that ai and he said he said, no, no, no. He wrote the song, you know, 30 years ago. I said, no, it's AI. And it was him, but it wasn't him. Like, it's hard to explain that because he was wearing, it looked like it was from 
maybe 52nd Street where he had like a jacket on and a loose tie and you know his hands were really young and just the way his head was moving it was just very unnatural yeah well a ai the, the models aren't quite yet there but they're going to be i mean it looks very real and, I, and but it's not real and i'll tell you especially with billy joel being alive right now and being yes. able to sing and produce music yes it's he incredible. could produce a whole new album mm -hmm. and you could go back in time and you could slip it into one of the sleeves at the record store you would pick it up and it would be like um nothing you nothing out of the ordinary that's how good it's going to get well, I understand that. I mean, I know the Beatles have come out with a new song, too. Um, well, that, that, that was more or less just the AI being able to recognize oh, John's okay. voice okay. in the tape and being able to separate out. Because like, that, that uh, original tape was really noisy in terms of um, all this, distor well, not distortion, but just um, like electrical noise on that okay. tape. And also the piano wasn't clear as well. So being able to separate those vocals and being able to mix it down into what right. that final track was was possible uh because of ai the the, sep the separate the voice out when he sings the song now it's not ai that's his voice now it's just the video is it yeah well i i'm sure i'm sure the ai you know is a advanced auto tuning for that but yeah no that's right. just um that's just taking that recorded it probably him recording it and just using ai to de-age him of course it doesn't do it correctly right. but you have to realize that this is going to be done hundreds and thousands and thousands of times and it's just going to get uh better and better and all of the um actors and, and yeah, musicians so they are they're going to they're that. they're going to yeah. sign away their rights for enough money because uh I, I have no doubt that there is a an amount of money that you can give Billy Joel and his AI rights are going to be uh, enshrined to Columbia Music well, or Sony yeah. Record Group or whatever big company. Well, uh, I, I don't think he needs to make any more money, obviously. Yeah, but it's just it's just the influence is um, there, and he can be bought and sold. So I I, I, I know. You like the man, and you respect his music, and, and whatever. Well, but I, I, I just a don't. Little deeper than that. I mean, he, he's part of the, the our cultural fabric. I mean, Piano Man, Vienna, um, Scenes from an Italian Restaurant, Only the Good Die Young, Uptown Girl. I mean, all, these are just iconic songs. And you know, I, I, I know actors and musicians, they're all overpaid and the ticket prices are outrageous, but they provide, you know, such a needed function in our society because we need entertainment we need music we need movies we need culture culture you know our our lives would be very boring and yeah well kind of empty without I, I, I'm, I'm telling so, you that because of uh, ai and the internet that the hollywood industry the music industry like the way that exists in the environment that you grew up in is going to not exist anymore in a couple of years and the oscars are in the, in the toilet uh, traditional music labels are um, all pumping out um, garbage and independent music creators can do this, you know, from their rooms, from their basements with a, a laptop and a, a microphone you can get off of Amazon. You can produce music that sounds like as if it were in the studio. That's crazy. Yeah. And that, that's, that's the environment that we're in now. Yeah. And then you couple this with the fact that uh, we live in a very uninspired uh, market when you get into the the higher um, you know, budgeted things, uh, you know, the 50, 100, 200 million things, these big music labels, you know, the Taylor Swifts of the world, the, um, you know, these big music stars, they get um, a lot of uh, people tuning into them, but it's very much derivative and of the same thing. And if you want, you know, the fresh and new stuff, uh, you have to go to the people who are um, doing it independently. And that's going to be, that's going to be the truth. And AI, you know, it's not only going to affect, you know, the iconic, um, you know, stars will sell out their like likenesses and do these sorts of things. Um, you know, whether it's them or their estates doing it, uh, it, it's going to be, uh, of course, a mixture of both. I'm sure. You know, you know, Bruce Willis has got his uh, uh, Alzheimer's, or and well, it's I think it's something to do with his speech, and I well, mean, it's a form of dementia. Yeah, well, well whatever. Yeah. Anyway, he's not going to be with us for too much longer, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and, and his family, when they manage his estate will sell his likeness and there will be AI movies of him and all basically any other actor. And we're going to have, yeah, the ability to do that. And you'll also have the fact that people can use AI to bolster their productivity creatively. So you can have one man make a movie that would take 20 people. 
and it's going to profoundly change the creative industry and, and how um, content is made and consumed. It's a little dangerous. I yeah, no, it definitely, it definitely is a, a bit of a dangerous thing, yes. but it just is uh, what it is, and it's a, either adapt or die. I think that's a pretty <laughs> good segue into the next thing that we want to okay. talk about, uh, post-apocalyptic yes. and fiction. Yes. Now, you're a big fan of The Walking Dead. Well, not, not really, because you don't I, like uh, you don't like half of the show, right? Because well, of all the violence in right. it that you fast forward through. <laughs> well, let me explain. So, you actually recommended The Walking Dead to me, and when I first started watching it, it was probably was. Would you remember how many seasons there had been? Like three or four, at least. Yeah. And I was drawn into the story of people being in this situation where you know masses of humanity have died and there are i don't know how many people left but in order for them to survive they have to form some type of structure and society and dare i say a bad word government <laughs> in 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 some rudimentary well, well you're form. talking about a hierarchy well a hierarchy where you have a leader and then you have to have a second in command and then you have to have, you know, even, you know, another tier of people that are, you know, working for the higher up people, but they're not like the regular people, you know, they're kind of like third on the food chain, so to speak. And you have pockets of society rebuilding themselves and you have some that are very, very bad where the, the leader is like a dictator in some instances, like you know, I don't want to name specific names of bad dictators, but somebody who has taken over power and has people doing evil things on their behalf. And you wonder, you know, how does society allow that to happen? Like, how does this little pocket of budding society allow that? Well, it's uh, it's influence. And some people are very good at being people people. People <laughs> A being a people person yes and they use that they ability kind of for yeah I for guess, nefarious means yeah. and you, and you see that in the walking dead so there's a lot yes. of uh human interaction yes. in and that. that's the part of the story that i enjoy. yes I, I know that's what I mean, not that i enjoy but that it's a fascinating look at how society rebuilt itself and it's not just like a post-apocalyptic world there's also lost which was like a plane crash and you had this whole group of people and they had to kind of get together and you know survive with each other and you know you always have to have somebody in command you always have to have some type of structure for people to survive in any type of social and you know not social interaction but just society in general don't you agree with that <laughs> well yeah no you, you never have yes. um there's always one dominant force one leader one person who yes. takes charge and that's why a lot of um, you know attempts to rule by council and ruling groups usually falls out to just having one person. I mean, that's right. why Rome went from a republic to an empire. Yes. So, uh, as, it, as bad as government is, I think you need it. No, <laughs> no, no. What, what, what you need is the um, the hierarchy and the structure. Yes. And I, I'm saying what I'm saying is that that can be decentralized and agreed on voluntarily. Whereas in this current system. I just have to accept that Joe Biden is the president and has to and, and get yes. to dictate certain things over my my life and environment. The same is true with Kathy Hochul in the state of New York, and that's yeah. the thing. But I, you don't vote, which is yeah. But but I I have to pay taxes. I I have to well, subject. Then... I I I am subject to um you know the licensing restrictions, all these sorts of things. So even if I I don't vote, I if I want to conduct myself legitimately in society, then I have to go to the government to do certain things. Yes. And that's regardless of whether I, I never I never vote in the first place or I vote in every single election, <laughs> is that you're still subject to what the government well, tells you to do. And you just get a vote to make you feel like what they're doing to you is okay when it isn't. But that, that's a that's a whole other thing. But but yes, again, they, they come so. to to your to your point. Yes. You need a hierarchy in any sort of um group of humans yes. the hierarchy is going to naturally form and yes. the formation of those hierarchies in certain situations is what's interesting and that's why the walking yes. dead appeals to people and lost also, appeals to uh, people and all uh, these sorts of things the last of us is yeah. another one I mean, the last of us is interesting so now yes i i i haven't watched the show i've you played should. i've played it's only 
10 episodes. Well, ago. I've played the game. Yes. So I know the story. Okay. So, and I know the story so of the El- second. Ellie and... Uh, Ellie and Joel. Joel, right. Yeah, so... Yes. And the second game has um, two um, different communities going at war with each other. And what I did not find interesting in The Last of Us Part Two, um, the game itself, the story, that main story wasn't interesting, but these two... Uh, societies in in that game and how radically different they were and finding out about them, finding out about how um, what drove their hierarchies and what they were was uh, very interesting. And I think you would like that in the show if the one, a second season happens. I and two, it must be. I hope so. And, and two, it, it features those um, those groups because they're, they're very different from each other, but they both are hierarchies. Well, they both uh, have their own goals that they're working toward and, and they, are in conflict with each right. other. In the first season, spoiler alert, um, well, I don't know how the game went, but uh, Ellie is the only one that's immune to, you know, there's a virus going around. Yes. It's very, obviously, pandemic, you know. Well, it's a, it's a fungal infection. Yes. And she's, she's immune to it. Right. And, and, they, and they, Joel is... And they want to yeah. kill her and you know, kind that, of that's, dissect her that's, to get a cure. That's how the, the first game go. And oh, I, I could does. tell you the, uh, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you because if they do a second season, it would cover the events of the second game. Okay. Which I, I know the story. I, I played through it. I, I, I did not like So it. do you get to choose what happens? No, or? you do not get to oh. choose what happens. So it, it, if the last, last, I've said this before, Last of Us, most overrated game of all time, <laughs> the way that game should have ended, you should have um, ended with either letting them kill Ellie or doing what the canonical ending of that show is. Or what that game is. Wait, the what ending? The canonical ending. What oh. actually happens oh, is okay. that Joel... Um, takes Ellie and yes. saves her from being yes. killed. That, that's what. That's he what does. happens in the show. Yes, awesome. that, but that, that's what happens in the game. And you don't, yeah. you don't. It just happens. You just have that um, cutscene happen where you should have had that choice and would have made the game a lot better, uh, okay. in my opinion. Okay. Uh, but the, it's not like even well, if yeah. In the in the show, you know, Joel's daughter dies at the beginning of. Yes, the, and, and that yeah, happens. And he, you know, obviously she becomes a surrogate daughter to him, and he's not going to let her die no matter what <laughs> so um but um they were eating 20 year old ravioli too <laughs> so and i don't know if they do that in the game yeah i i don't yeah. think i'm not sure if they uh oh, i'm not sure if they do that they did change uh a lot of stuff right. but my, my my point with the last of yes. us is that even if it was um done like that Yes. It still would be the most overrated game of all time. Not that it was a bad game. It's just okay. that that game was um, hyped up for what it was because of its story. And I don't want to get into this. Did it come out before our pandemic? Or what? The Last of Us, the, it, the game. It, it came out in 2013. Oh, okay. So it, that, oh, it, that it, long ago. Yeah, yeah, it's been out for a while. And the second one came out in 2020. Oh, wow. So, so. It, yeah, seven <laughs> years. It took a while. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, yeah, no, that, that, the second one... Again, it made some narrative choices that really angered the fans. I don't want to spoil this for you because they okay. do make a second season. Okay. Then it would follow the the, the, okay. the story so don't of the say second anything. game. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it ended with him saving her, and they were like, trying yeah. to find a better place. <laughs> yeah, so that's. I, I don't want to get into that, but the, the whole okay. point, long long tangent, is yes, that the tangent. hierarchies that form in post apocalyptic scenarios are much smaller and much more yes. um, diversified than this than these general nation states that we find ourselves in. And that's what appeals to people is that you have these like um, supreme cults or these yes. like small farm towns basically having to function as their own city states. Yes. And like maybe Very like self contained. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, and that's what appeals and interests yeah. uh, people. Well, it's in, it's also interesting how some of them are really good and some of them are just yeah, wow. well, well, you, you'll find it's just Horrible. a few um, people in the environment that get elevated to that position of leader. So if you have uh, a, a moral upstanding man and you have um, these people who want to act like that but aren't allowed to because they either get um, reprimanded or they get thrown out, then you'll find that community becomes good. But if you have someone like Negan from The Walking oh, Dead or, or the governor as yes. the leader, then you, you find uh, you have this debauchery and degeneracy that gets... Um, either um, completely encouraged or overlooked um, as long as certain markers are met to maintain that. humanity to man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yes. But uh, I don't have anything else to say about <laughs> okay. that. So, okay. So uh, if, if you don't have anything else to add, I think uh, we're ready to uh, sign off. Okay. Well, yeah. it was a pleasure, Ben. Yes. Okay. Thank we'll head you. into the outro now. Okay.
Thank you for being in the Velvet Room with Joker the Fool. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe whether you're listening on YouTube, Rumble, Odyssey, or Substack. And be sure to subscribe to my Substack, velvetroompublishing.substack.com to keep up with Machine to Man and all my other projects.